Mr. Saito mentioned also, also uh, Mr. Uh, Mashimoto uh, asked about this um, possibility, possibility uh, concerning uh, Japan's role. I think one important, if you, if you look at Japan's, I think uh, how you mentioned it concerning uh, Japan's emphasis, uh, the role of uh, Arctic cooperation, especially the rule of law, that it should be uh, the main main focus in, in this cooperation. Finland has a similar kind of approach, and of course, then uh, uh, comes comes to my mind uh, the, the fact you mentioned about uh, exclusive exclusive economic zones. Then, it, whatever happens inside those, it's in the jurisdiction of uh, sovereign states. So basically. Uh, uh, via international legislation, there's very little to do concerning, for example, the environmental responsibilities uh, in, in energy projects in the Arctic. But of course, via uh, different kinds of instruments, and of course, for, for example, Arctic Council is one of those yeah. institutions. Uh, via uh, we, J Japan, and other other uh, nations as well, can influence the so-called soft law. Mm -hmm. And this is, as I mentioned in my presentation, there is possibility opening now that Russia. Uh, wanting to frame Arctic as an area of cooperation, there is possibility that there is more space for soft law, so to say, and that's that's of course a, a good good news. And of course, it's of course for our if you think of the possibilities of fin Finnish industries, it's it's a, it's a responsible, environmentally sound technologies that can be utilized in the Arctic, and I think Japan shares the same strength, so to say. Uh, concerning uh, the Northern Sea route and ocean. Uh, 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 and Arctic Ocean becoming a, a normal ocean uh, in, in the future, and, and in a way, does it possibly change the, the mindset of, of of Russians and the ruling elite in Russia concerning whether it's land power or sea power? And that's, of course, if you look at Russia now and, and during the past couple of centuries, of course, Russia has been a sea power as well, because you have Saint Petersburg, you have Murmansk, you have Vladivostok, you have Novorossiysk, you have all the connections to the world oceans. So, in, in that respect. I don't see any any uh, real change, regardless of what kind of environmental change there will be in the Arctic. Of course, its role can can increase you know, and, and maritime uh, traffic uh, via increased traffic. Its role can increase, but I don't see it changing really. Really, the of course, in a situation when, for example, in hundred years from now, if, if the Arctic ice is totally non-existent. Then of course the traffic will move there, and for example, uh, the, the traffic between between Japan, China, and Europe will move to that route, and that's for sure. But then of course it's the route, direct route. It's not via Russian coast, mm -hmm. but it's via yeah, yeah. via the North Pole. And then of course Russia's role is is uh, less than probably in the next couple of decades. Uh, 